and she comes in handy during yeah. one scene later on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm such uh, a kid. Yeah. Handy? <laughs> uh... Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from CinemaSins, joined by Jonathan Watkins from CinemaSins. Hello, hello. And the so-called B-team, rest of the B-team. We are all here. Are all in here, too. Yes. Aaron Dicer is with us. Hadley Ho, Cinerinos. And Danae Hughes, the, 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 the hit of Discord, the goddess, <laughs> the goddess of Discord is here. Uh, yeah, hi. Hey, we're going to be doing a mini pod. Jiminy pod. There we go. Jiminy pod. That is for Ryan Gosling. That's right. That's for all you astronauts in the 60s. <laughs> um, we are going to be doing a mini pod of Gemini Man today. Jiminy Man. Yeah, Jiminy Sorry. Man. Sorry. I'm Gemini, done with it, I Gemini, promise. Yeah. They don't, they don't say Jiminy once <laughs> in this movie. Just they want to say, they, they say Gemini. As they should, I as think, God intended. And also, I'm a Gemini, and um, I, you know, I took a lot of offense with this movie. No, I'm just mm-hmm. kidding. Yeah, I, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I do believe it. One uh, at night, I did hear some uh, Jiminy crickets, though. Yeah, uh, I did it at one point during a night scene. We, we have the, we have the same birthday, right? I was just like, I'm oh, Gem- that's right. I was like, do. I'm a Gemini too, and I was like, oh, actually, we have the exact same birthday. Yeah, we're one so. year, we're one year apart. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, I discovered that because uh, episode of Sif Pop. Uh, with him, and he was talking about it was his birthday, and it, that was when it was on a Friday. And I'm like, is his birthday May 20th? Or do I gotta say that? Yeah, it's well, fine. you say it on Zip Pop. Yeah, it's his birthday May 26th. And then when I met you, yeah, well, I found out we had How the same birthday. How dare you let people know the day they can give me presents? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I will. True. I will What's your PO box? <laughs> I will enjoy being a year older for my man. entire life. Yeah. I mean, you're a year younger. Yes. Why would I enjoy being a year old? Uh, Jim and I, man, made twenty million dollars over the weekend here, Not good. here in the U.S. Not good at all. Is a hundred something million budget. I don't know how it's going to do worldwide. Ang Lee again stretching his directorial muscles, trying to do something different here. Um, but uh, how how big of a success do you think this movie is? Somebody just start speaking. Uh, I, th- I think it's not very big of a success at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's, it's interesting because Will Smith has such a natural charisma. He's always great to watch on screen. He's just a fun, and this movie somehow actually saps a little bit of that from him. Like the, just the, the pacing and the tone is, is quite a bit down. The story is so basic. There's nothing really going on. Um, it's just every, every plot movement seems obvious to me. I just, I wasn't engaged. I just didn't feel very engaged during the movie. I'm of two minds with this movie because I kind of, well, that's appropriate. Yeah, yeah, there you go. (laughs) I kind of want to recommend it if you're in an area where you can see it as it's, and I know we're going to have different opinions on this too. But if you what is it what is it called I'm sorry Oh HDR. well it's show you yeah, HFR high HFR. frame rate Yeah and it's 120 It was shot at 120, 120 okay. uh both eyes most places can only play it at 60 Yeah well, we, by, by the way why would you shoot one eye different Well you wouldn't shoot them differently but but you would shoot like I just say that because the, the, there is a uh, a multiplication effect that happens in the digital file uh-huh. and being able to do it. So it's twice as much information if both eyes are 120 versus uh, like a 120 non 3D. Okay. So in by the way it's showing that way. There are places that can show it in 120 uh that is just uh one it's not 3D. Mm-hmm. Uh what did we see? We saw 60 okay, okay. but it feels like 120 because again it's 60 for both eyes so, it's hard to so yeah. if you can if you can see it in six if you like for instance if you're in the nashville murfreesboro area you can go see it in 60 apparently uh, but if you can see it in the way it's intended to be seen i just visually it's so interesting even if you don't like that it's just one of those things that why going to a theater could make the experience different um but this movie is so bad mm. like i mean i'm i'm other than like if there weren't like the there's a couple of really cool uh sequences. Yes. And and they're probably the only reason my grade's not gonna be lower than it is because I just I don't think this movie's good. Mm-hmm. And like you said, like like n- like this movie has like no pulse at all. And it's not even like a slow burn, like I, I don't like a no burn, is that a thing? It I don't is even now. know. I mean, seriously, like I there's there's no um there's no urgency. And it's an action movie. 
And like just it almost feels like nothing happens. Yeah. Um and Will Smith, to 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 go with your point, um, he's supposed to be like this assassin. Obviously we'll talk about spoilers later, but he's supposed to be this assassin. He's supposed to be the best assassin in the world, because they're always the best fucking assassin in the world. They can shoot people from with their eyes closed from eight thousand feet away. Um and but he's supposed to like hate his life and he hates that this is the only good thing he can do and stuff. So I get that. But then when it gets to be where he's on the run because there's people trying to kill him, which is like twenty five minutes into the movie, he's acting the fucking same. Like he's still just like he's like Dante and Clerks. Like I shouldn't have, I wasn't supposed to be here today. Like that seems to be his attitude the entire movie. Like that's the level he's on. So I don't know if he's phoning it in. I don't know if that's writing. I don't know what that is, but it's it's really disappointing. Danae, what do you think? Uh, it's okay to say you liked it. I oh, for sure. did not okay. like it. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping somebody just, could. just wanted to make sure that you know you're in a safe place. Thank and you. And if you said, hey, I kind of like this. I think you guys are giving this movie a little bit of a hard time. This movie is amazing. Uh-huh. Um, but mm-hmm. it's not. Yeah. It's, oh, there's there's parts of it I agree that I think were really good. And there's, there's two movies going on. There's the movie that you're watching, because we did see it in the mm-hmm. high frame rate, um, and in 3D. So it's like. So there's like this visual thing that your brain is – you're thinking about how clear uh, you can see the actors and the actresses. And you're think, seeing, thinking about like, oh, the scenery is really beautiful. Like there's some shots that mm-hmm. show the sky and the night sky and, and everything's just popping so beautifully. Or even well, the boat from above on the water. And it's just like, oh, man, this is really gorgeous. And and add to the technical aspects that we haven't mentioned yet, you have a fully digital – Young Will Smith, oh, that yeah. is also a technical and, achievement yeah. as well. So you've got all these technical yeah. achievements. Yeah, and so going on. so you're and watching that's a, it. That's a good and that's a good achievement. I so would that's say. like one thing that's going on, and you can judge the movie just based on that. And then you think about the story that's going on, and it was I would totally agree. It just it 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 not only fell flat, it was confusing how flat it was. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind the simpleness. Like you, I mean, that's fine. You just want to have an assassin on the run story. There's been plenty of those made very well, but this one just isn't. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, I can't really quite put my finger on what. And and I don't even honestly know exactly what this movie is is about or trying to say. Because if if you had me repeat this movie, to, like what the story was after right after we got out, I don't know that I could do it. Well, I have ideas on that, but I want I want to hear what yeah. uh, Chris has Go to say about it. the movie. Um, so yeah, the. I, it's 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 weird when you're in the middle of a movie and you're like, why am I not liking this? Yeah, I don't know what it is. There's nothing particularly just horrible about right. it. It's just that why is it that I'm not getting into this? And one one part of it is I feel like they had a premise that they could have gone way more into and just didn't. Mm-hmm. Like it, it feels like because we will get into this in the spoilers it's by the end of it you're like why didn't they do a lot of other things with this yeah they could have done so many things with this that would have been like yeah. you went in a mind-blowing christopher nolan type movie almost at, 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 by the end of it uh but you you guys are right about how it's so basic about everything there's just there's just nothing and and even clive owen who is a bad guy in this movie mm-hmm. his plan is not it doesn't seem terribly evil. I and- mean, <laughs> I, the, uh, the one of the worst things you can say about the movie is is I forgot Clive Owen was in it like five minutes after I got out of the theater. He, like, yeah. he does nothing in this movie. No, really. He's, yeah, he's the only thing that you. only thing that they do that's right right off the bat, you're like, oh, dealing with an evil. Uh, th- I, is it? And maybe have to wait until we get into spoilers because we talk about the very beginning of this movie, which really just is what rockets this rockets quote unquote <laughs> rockets this movie into its bottle plot. rockets bottle rockets this movie yeah like a weak cherry bombs this movie into its <laughs> a plot. Dud. yeah um but uh there's a thing at the beginning of this that i was like there wasn't any reason to do that was there there wasn't any like <laughs> oh interesting i'm really curious what you're talking about yeah now. i want to get into the spoilers here in a minute well i want to i want to sort of get our grades first so that everybody kind of knows what we think about it but um, but yeah, I think they took a premise that could have been way better, had a lot more substance to it. And instead, and I, I, I know, I know that criticism is not what a movie should be. You grade it on what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And I struggle with that. It, I just feel like with this premise, they could have done so much more. 
I still think you can talk about that, though. I, I mean, I, maybe that doesn't affect I've, your grade, but, like, I think you can talk about that, like, what you would have liked it to have done. I'll just keep it at they could have done more. I was thinking of a whole bunch of stuff during this, and, yes, I know that my ideas are no better than anybody else's ideas about where they could have gone with this movie. It's just that I would have preferred it that they take a premise like this and just, like, really given us something more than what they did. So uh, yeah. I think they, they, they decided to just strip it down bare bones and just like, let's make, uh, you know, uh, this story about Will Smith and his, his I mean, this is in the trailer, his clone. And, uh, and uh, does Will Smith ever have to be bad? We can't make him bad, right? Never bad. He's not a bad guy. He's an accidental bad guy. Right. He's an accidental bad guy. Yeah. So let's make it about their relationship. Yeah. So what's your grade? Uh, I'm going to go D plus on this one. Okay. What about you guys? Uh, I, and we will talk more about this. Uh, I guess we don't even need to wait to spoilers, but the technical stuff blew me away enough that I'm all the way up at a C plus and it's almost only yeah, because no, I of that. Like you. I want to give I it just that you. little plus above. Well, I have a question mediocre. though, because you saw it in two, you saw it without I've seen it, it both ways. So before you saw it with it being in a uh, high frame rate, mm -hmm. would you, was it the same grade? I mean, maybe it would have been a C instead of a C plus, but even in the non 3D low frame rate, that that young Will Smith stuff is mind blowing to me. And so, like, there's enough there. And, and that's the weird thing about yeah. grading is what yeah, do you yeah. take into account? What do you? I, and for me, I want to make sure my grade indicates a little bit of if I'm recommending it or not. And so, you know, if I go with a D plus or even a C minus, I don't want people to misunderstand. Yeah. Don't see this; it's trash. Because, uh, like you said, I think there's some fascinating stuff going on here. Technically, I, I think there's, if you're a visual person uh, at all, or if you just enjoy, uh, and the, I would even throw the action scenes in there. I, yeah, I really I, actually I, enjoyed the action. I scenes I agree. In this I think movie. there's a couple of really stellar action sequences in this, but uh, I'm at a C, um, and that's that's solely almost all visual. And like I said, I I, I would recommend it to somebody that's if they can't experience it at least close to the way it's supposed to be experienced because that is very unique. I mean, I've never I mean, I've never watched a movie where I literally it felt like I was just looking out my window. Yeah. Uh, that's a really weird experience and we can even talk about that. But um or like I said last night it was almost it kind of looked like a, a BBC drama. I don't know why, but it did. Uh, well, that's because that's exactly yeah. what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you don't you don't have to apologize for no. that or because it's exactly what well, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, I don't think if I, I mean, it just like I made the joke that like at the end of that if they had said next week on Killing Eve, I would have been like, "Okay." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's what we're doing. That's uh that's something I'm still not I'm not all the way on board with yet because I feel like movies should be taking you into another world that is not ours not something that looks so realistic that oh it's right there in yeah. front of us oh well, it's like it's like we're seeing it being filmed yeah. <laughs> right in front of us yeah i'm not i'm not that big I'm, on that I'm kind of realism you, yeah, you know you. uh i know that the 24 uh frames per second frame the, that rate was because they couldn't go higher back in the day and we just yeah. sort of adopted that as forever 24 frames per yeah. second and everything but there's something to it right there's something that makes you feel like you're watching a movie and now that now i'm watching like somebody's home videos <laughs> well and, and i don't know and that's the thing until we see multiple of these i'm sorry Nan, i didn't mean to cut you off in your grade but until we see multiples of these i don't know if we're gonna know if they can do different visual things with it because that's the thing about movies right you can have completely different looks like you can have a movie like dark city and a movie like jurassic park and Terminator. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like like they're, they're darker looks or they're lighter looks or you know they're like something like a dario argento film like they're really colorful and there's just you know, like almost like just you know bloods coming out of the screen at you and I mean, I don't know that you can do that with this because I just feel like this is just going to be like real world. There is some sort of found footage quality, right? To it, yeah, where yeah. like the the effects and all the action seem to really actually be happening, and there's no there's no sort of sense yeah. of like, ah, well, that's fake or whatever. Eh, they had stunt doubles there. It mm -hmm. really does feel like this is actually happening, and I and I enjoyed that too. I enjoyed yeah. that aspect. Yeah, I, that's of what it. I liked about it. But anyway, which is great. Um. So, I don't usually grade movies. This is interesting to think about because I think if it's action, you know, maybe it would be like a C or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, because I did like the action scenes. I think it was really clear because of it being shot, you know, so well. I, I, was, I can actually follow the action and sometimes that gets confusing. So, that's kind of high. I actually enjoy the acting. Um, and I, maybe it was muted because it is shot in such a high frame rate that – it would be overacting if they really emoted. And so you're watching like these characters who are kind of more serious because they've got serious jobs. And so they're not like really 
super joyful or you know goofy that's a more serious acting but at the same time you're if, since it's so clear it's like you're just looking at their face and you can kind of read what they're thinking in a way and i was really intrigued by that and i actually really enjoyed mary elizabeth winstead i had to look that up yeah because i didn't remember that was yeah she's she's great like um uh, it. I feel like that's one of the few actors I've seen come up through like a Final Destination mm-hmm. type of whatever, which and is then, a super fun movie. By yeah, the way. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sh- I, and I know that she was in stuff before that and everything. Oh, but... she was in Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yes, that's where I remember her. From. That's where I fell in love with uh, her. that and Scott Pilgrim. She's John McClane's daughter and uh, Die that's Hard. That's interesting. For, live for your Die so Hard. I yeah. really liked. I really liked her. I thought she did great. And then there's the CGI, which has its pluses and minuses. And then the. Uh, the locations are beautiful, and so it's like a kind of trending really great, and then it gets the plot and story, which is like an F. So I think I have to sort of combine all of those together mm-hmm. and come out somewhere around a D plus, mm-hmm. C minus. Yeah, okay, that seems fair. Um, but yeah, the Mary Elizabeth Winstead started out where you were like, eh, okay, she's serviceable or whatever, but she it, it's pretty clear over the years. She's really dedicated herself to like becoming. Well, and our character is kind good. of interesting in this one because you kind of at first you don't know who she is and what she's in the movie for like is she going to be a love interest is she going to be you know this or that and you just don't know why they're putting a female into it usually it's love interest let's just be honest usually it's like oh you're going to fill this like role and it's kind of fun to see that develop a little bit Mm -hmm. she was uh just out of curiosity i looked this up she was did a bunch of television at first like touched by an angel she apparently was on a bunch of episodes of the soap opera passions oh which i think that's the one with like the killer that was the the crazy one yeah that was the one with all the like Uh, science fiction in it but it looks like her first movie was The Ring 2. Oh, yeah. I remember that. She is young Evelyn. So. Yeah. And then she – oh, Sky High. Oh, totally yeah. Sky forgot. High. And yeah. then after Sky High, she does Final Destination 3, and then it kind of it, – you know, she's where she is now. Um, I liked her too, but I will say I don't – I didn't find her character as interesting as you did. And I kind of wondered – as much as I love seeing her pop up on the screen, anytime she's there, I'm always like, why don't I see more Mary Elizabeth Winstead? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't really figure out why she was there. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the plot. I think that's the yeah, writing, Yeah, I do, too. too. Oh, I do, too. It has nothing to do with her. Yeah, Absolutely he needs somebody to, to play off of the entire time, and like, uh, and she comes in handy during yeah. one scene later on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm such uh, a kid. Yeah. Handy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's get into spoilers. Let's do it. No spoilers! Kevin Spacey is Kaiser Sose. Miss Luke's what? father is actually Darth Vader. She's, She's the sister and the daughter. She's they just no, 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 no. I'm reading the books. Um, so yeah, the thing at the very beginning of this that I was like, by the end of this movie, I was like, okay, I don't understand this. So they get, they get Will Smith. He's the best ever, you know, he's dead shot, right? Yeah. And they get him. He's the best ever. They, they, they set up this whole thing where they have this bio terrorist on a train and he has to hit him mm-hmm. from two mile, two kilometers away. Yeah. And he has to hit him in a, it, like at this one window. And if he doesn't, oh my God, he's a bio terrorist. He no telling yeah. what he could get away with. And then we find out he's not a bio terrorist at all. And then I'm like, why did they have to get a sniper then to kill that guy if he was just <laughs> Joe from, yeah. Joe from Analytics or whatever he was. Um, yeah, they just didn't want him giving up information, right? Right. Why, like, yeah. if, if, he's not, if he's not that big of a deal, then why don't you just poison him somewhere? Or why don't you – there's no reason yeah. to go through all yeah. this, right? And they, they might have been lying, but didn't they even tell Will Smith that he was like the fifth guy they tried to get him to kill? Right, him but they, they I got the sense that so they weird. weren't lying about that. No, it, it sounds like they were having a hard time taking this guy out. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Like, no, I mean, I, I, I didn't. Didn't the movie establish though that that guy wasn't a bio terrorist? That they shot him because he knew th- knew. Yeah, things? I thought he was the one that like had the knowledge. He knew about yeah. the cloning and yeah. stuff. That's why they shot him, and that's why he died. But if he's not a big deal, if he's not that hard, if he's not a, if he's not somebody who's like hiding in the shadows and everything, this guy's not hard to kill. They don't need to hire Will Smith yeah, to do I it. I didn't get that at all. Maybe he had like some super expensive security detail that he hired or something. Or it for... didn't look like he had a super expensive security <laughs> detail yeah, on that could, train. You could tell us that. And like, know. there's a whole point where it's like, oh, could have killed a kid. Oh my god, could have killed a kid during that whole thing. Yeah. Ah, oh, but the emotional trauma of seeing someone murdered in front of you—that's okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. Well, well apparently, also, also, apparently everybody videotaped. They have it, a so. dude on the train. That's 
what I was just about to say. You've got a guy right there, three seats from yeah. him. Like, why do you need? There's to take a dude the on the train. Why doesn't he just like do one of those like you know the 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 gun barrel comes out of the suitcase and he just shoots him and then? And I don't I don't think it was that guy, but I really thought that was the guy from Hereditary for a second. There was oh yeah, and yeah. I was, and, but when I thought that, I was just thinking, man, if he would just start crying now, uh, I would, or I would what if life. he was allergic to him. bees and they just shot him on the train with bee venom? Oh yeah, you know? it could be that. It's a great plot. Um, somebody movie. does get shot with bee venom. Oh in my movie. god. Yeah, that that I mean, if if you don't mind jumping around, that no, not at all. that bee venom thing slayed me in the like the first time I saw it. I'm just going, how does a man who is deathly allergic to bees not carry an epipen around with him everywhere he goes? Right. Yeah. I know people with bad allergies; they carry epipens. Yeah. My mother in law, my mother in law has two in her not purse that, at all times. He is the most intelligent, smart, you know, human who does everything right. But also, but that whole pen. scene is about the clone trying to figure out if Will is actually him or not. Yeah. And wouldn't the DNA prove that? Like, wouldn't he be like, hey, I'll just take some of the blood that's all over my body from beating you up several times, well, and I'll go get that compared in a lab. Why do you have to shoot him with bee venom to prove that he is who he says he not is? Not only that, nobody is telling you he's not anymore. Even your dad is yes. like, yeah, we did this thing. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, there's yeah. nobody in your life who is saying <laughs> this isn't true. Yeah. Right? Why do you, what, what more I do know you what need? I'll do. I'm going to get bee venom, and then I'm going to, you know, pink. Yeah. yeah, well, and it also it also serves, I guess, to show that he's on their side because he goes over immediately and, and saves. Him. Yeah, no, yeah. that's the point. That's for the sure. whole point. But you're right. Why doesn't he have something re- on the ready? And like yeah. they get they get very concerned about it immediately and everything. Um, the by the end of it, it, it's it's also pretty laughable because there's a big scene at the end where they're are they in Atlanta by the end of the yeah, yes the, the end takes in place Georgia, in Georgia yeah. Yeah. yeah and they and there's this big scene where they you know they've got a tank set out on the like you know Peachtree Street or whatever and like uh they're ready to to kill Will Smith and everything and uh and then they they you know uh Clive Owen sends the clone in to kill him mm-hmm. and everything and then while while he's waiting for that somebody in a helmet we don't know who that is <laughs> somebody in a helmet shows up and Clive Owen gives him the nod and says yeah who time looks to like go. snake eyes right and i and I, and i thought it was funny because of all so we know this is another Will Smith clone yeah. immediately there's no <laughs> real surprise to this at all but he goes in and then like after they kill him they they're like well we got to find out who this is <laughs> even though a hundred other people with helmets have yeah. come in yeah. and tried to kill him before but this guy's special we got to know his identity there was even that guy with the uh like the Jason mask on I mean it looked like it wasn't a hockey mask but it looked like a Mad Max villain or something he was up there like shooting the Do you oh remember this? yeah the turret yeah yeah, 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 he had a he had a mask on. Oh yeah, yeah. they yeah. didn't go back to him. Oh yeah, they didn't even kill him. But yeah, yeah. By the end of it, you're wondering why aren't there? I mean, there might be actually. They they never really answer that question because there's a there's a thing where Will Smith talks to his old handler guy. And he said, and the old handler guy is like, "All right, well, we made sure that he stopped that program, and there yeah, are no more yeah, clones." He's exactly, he's exact words are, "There's no more clones. We check." Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, thank and, you. And Will Smith is like, check? "And okay, Will Smith's like, oh, okay, yeah. just com- completely thank buys you for it." Checking. Yeah, I, I appreciate love, though, that. I'm sitting by Chris watching this scene, and I love that we were both on the same page because after they take that helmet off, I'm like, "Oh no, that's crazy." And then Chris is like, "Yeah, never saw that coming." Yeah. Did, did you hear the guy beside <laughs> me? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. We ha- I had movie talkers beside me. Yeah. The, the whole time oh, yeah. and during that scene he was like what yeah, I did, I did, yeah. <laughs> they come were the, on man they were the ones that kept laughing at everything too yeah. well, there were a lot of people laughing and i was like is this funny like yeah. I'm so, sorry. i think this like, is I'm why not to be a dick, the but. plot doesn't work is there there's all these opportunities to build this sort of like you know a, maybe a different reveal like maybe that there was a whole warehouse of clones that they have to go fight you know together mm-hmm. or something and, and have these major battles where you have We'll say Will Smith and then the first clone, which has emotions and feelings and pain. And then the next clone we see that's revealed has been genetically mutated to not have any emotions Mm -hmm. or pain. And so they're more of a war machine in that way and less and less human is kind of the premise of it. Well, that's where the movie should kind of go. And I feel like if they had cut out – like Jack or whatever his name was, who was on the boat, who gave the information about mm-hmm. he needed to go to Bangladesh, and maybe some of the backstory with the 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 guy who did the yeah. fighter jet. It's like this was a two hour movie, and by the time you get to the like 
90 minute mark is when you're thinking this is where the movie should start is in this moment yeah. here and give us just like a 15 or 20 minute you know pickup we didn't need to see like maybe see him shoot his way out of the house when the government turns against will smith and suddenly he's like this prized yeah. person who wants to retire and now uh you know they're coming after him because he you know is going to go figure out the secret or whatever and so the government starts to come after him which is why he's running so maybe start there and then just less conversation with the people but i think we feel that way because the action is the only stuff in the movie that works yeah i think if the other stuff works because they're, I think they're trying to do something with that other stuff. I think right. this movie is trying to be mm-hmm. about facing your own demons, about you know, fate, looking at yourself in the mirror. How many times do we need to hear mm. about mirrors or see mirrors True in this battle movie? Friendship. Yeah, so it's trying to do something metaphorically about looking within, looking without, all that kind of stuff. There's a little bit of meta ness. You know, you talk about mm-hmm. what this movie is about. There's a little bit of meta ness with Will Smith's like career like or even acting in general like the yeah. idea that these digital actors are going to come you know and do what we do but not have to get paid and you know not have you know to deal with the divaness of actors and the emotion like but, there's some meta-ness there that, but the that movie... does not come across though. no it yeah. doesn't but i'm saying if that stuff yeah. worked maybe we're more engaged in those earlier conversations and relationships but because the action is the only yeah. stuff that works you're right it feels like it should just start with and i stuff. mean granted they could have changed a lot but this is also one of those situations where this is is a screenplay that's been bounced around uh, for years, yeah. and there's other people attached, and other actors attached, and then finally, somehow, Ang Lee and Will Smith got together and were like, "We got to really make this." But I, but I can't even figure out. Like, I'm really curious to know what they did change some stuff because I don't know why this screenplay, <laughs> out of like all the possible screenplays out there, would have been so interesting that like all these people were trying to do it. And you know, yeah, I read it, it was a, a movie. I read it was originally supposed to be Tom Cruise that uh, Ang Lee went after Tom Cruise first. And, I uh, could he, totally see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I mean, well, it's Will Smith is not the problem here. I mean, granted, I mean, because even even though we're talking about, it seems very. He seems very nonchalant about everything. He doesn't have a whole lot of emotion. I mean, I think that's just written on the page. I think that's what the character is supposed to be like, yeah. and he's doing his best. I yeah, mean, I he's just, a he's an assassin who has yeah. has basically lost a lot of that because yeah. that's one of the big things that they talk about. But it's just weird that. to me when. He starts, you know, I mean, he does, like, show some emotion in the sense that he makes sure Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character's safe, and he makes sure his friend's safe, although he does a terrible job of that eventually. But um, he still, to me, just his – the way he was acting in those scenes, though, was just like, God damn it. Mm-hmm. I got to deal with this shit today. Like, it's it almost felt like, like, I forgot milk. Yeah. Here's something else the movie did that I didn't – I did it a couple times. Um it, there are these periphery characters that are only there for like a scene and then they're killed off, but they're Will Smith's friends. Mm-hmm. And in the, both the cases I'm specifically thinking of, Marino was, uh, the guy he worked yeah. with and he called him, yeah, he's yeah. trying to save him. And I kind of thought they, they had a good chemistry yeah. and they were Not fun together. And, guy. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then the guy on the boat that, mm-hmm. you know, warns him about, it. there was also a warmness there and a, uh, yeah. you know, a good relation, a camaraderie. I like those characters and I kind of wish, you know, yeah. but the movie wanted to kill them off, but it wanted to kill them off. And it gave them both character flaws in an obvious way that I was just like, you don't always have to do that. Like yeah. I, movies always, when they're going to kill somebody off, they give you one thing where you can be like, eh, it's okay that they die, you yeah. know. So he's cheating on his wife on the boat, right. so eh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And the other guys like videoing the thing and being a little aggressive about that. And like, eh, okay, well maybe you can. I just I wish movies would be like they can have a great camaraderie, be a great guy, and you know, and, and we still can, die, and we can mm-hmm. still kill them well, off. And then you know? his friend, his other friend, later dies. The 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 guy. From, the pilot, uh, the guy from Rogue One. Well, yeah, and, that, uh, yeah. Benedict Wong. Yeah, yeah, Benedict Wong. Thank you. I can never remember his name. Um, we will mark even, this down as the moment in history that Danae knew a name of. I an have actor. IMDb in oh, front okay, of me, guys. and that could have been <laughs> that could have been a cool scene. But like, they just kind of like he he dies in that car explosion, and then it's yeah. like, oh, now we got to go do this whole twist. But for some reason, it, there was no like I didn't feel anything. I wasn't no. feeling anything. And I wonder if it's there because I was distracted by the visuals or, or if I was – I don't know. It was such, yeah. it was such an interest. I don't know. I, yeah, and this is – again, I'm going to go back to where I, I feel like this movie really, I really sort of wrecked itself was that the Will Smith clone is – he cannot be a bad guy. He, he's got to be struggling with his, his inner turmoil and everything and – and everything. I wish he had just been a bad guy the entire time, 
and, and that Will had to take him out, and he had to take him out, and that yeah. that's an interesting movie. Yeah, it yeah. would have been, or, or maybe even he takes Will out. I mean, yeah, that, that's an interesting idea. Either you know, way, something, but and, yeah, or, him being or a college and, happy is bullshit. And you can have, you can have, yeah, I know that that <laughs> ending, that ending. I was like, this Ooh. this is already too long. Six as months it is. later, yeah, this is already too long as it is. But that whole college thing lasts another yeah, like, like eight minutes. Yeah, like something. the three girls just hanging off of him, like, right? Walking. Well, and it's and it's the worst. Uh, aspect of the, the CG yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah. it is in the daylight. You can see how how digital his. Character. But there are moments when that CGI was like, oh, it's Whoa. it looks flawless at times. Uh, I, I, I assume yeah. did everybody like the motor. Cycle scene. I I, I mean, did. I yeah, really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. Th- th- I thought it was great in that whole sequence. I mean, it just yeah. looked like that was yeah, that was like fr- I was watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air on a I, on a motorcycle. The uh, and you would think this would be different, but watching it in HFR, it was even better than watching it in regular. And I think for whatever reason, when the rest of the actors are also so sharp and defined, the digital actor, yeah. which is sharp and defined, feels more meshed. When I watched it without the 3D and yeah. without the HFR, it was still good, but I noticed a little bit more of kind of the awkward movements, the awkward eye stuff, and just some I different think, things. But so, so there's this when the when the scene starts, Will Smith jumps on to a um, what kind of a motorcycle is it called? I don't know. It's not. I'm, I'm not. I mean, I don't know. It, it, a motorbike. It's a, it, it, yeah. It's more of a motorbike, like a cross road. Cross. Yeah. I think it actually. It's like a sports bike. I think there is a sports point where bike. it actually does show you what the brand is. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah, but. it's one that whenever the engine goes, like, like yeah, that. it's a sports bike. It's not a. It's not a hog. Yeah, yeah, but it's not even like a a a Buell or something. It's more. Anyways, sorry. Yeah. It's chopper it, baby. Yeah, it's like one where you like <laughs> jump. It's like a jumper one. I yeah. Mean, um, yeah. I am sorry. I don't know my motorcycle terminology, but anyhow, so he's he's going straight down the middle of our view through the streets. And what's interesting is a lot of times in those, you know, they'll cut away and then they'll show another angle and they're cut away. But there's this whole sequence where we're following so closely that you're. I was kind of impressed with the stunt man because he's mm-hmm. just woo, like going up to the curb and then he hits the curb and then like he'll he ran into a car mm-hmm. and it just was all really well done and the control that that person had to have on the bike because you're. There's no way that wasn't yeah. actually a stuntman on a bike. That wasn't like the face was CGI to yeah. make it look like Will Smith, but the person driving and because it was in, it was so clear, it felt like a video game or something where you're like controlling yeah. this bicycle through the streets. And I really enjoyed that. Well, I, was, I, I think I was in this on HFR one. stuff is the future for for a few reasons, but one of them is because I think the generation that's growing up now is used to seeing video this way, whereas our generation yeah. isn't. You know, we're used to 24. Well, you mentioned There's... last night I record on my phone in. Yeah, you record frame. in high yeah. frame rate yeah. on your phone. Now. There's no doubt about this because my nephew, whenever I go over and visit them and they have their, I, and TV comes on, it's mm-hmm. doing that whole smoothing thing. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, this is not how the movie was right. made. You know, this is. This is dumb. This I don't is like fake. it. Yes. Yeah. But they're like, oh, I love it this way. And it's like, okay, well, I, I can't, so you're saying I can't argue. I don't play video games. You're saying it's, it's like the video game character. I'm saying now. they see it in video games. I'm yeah. saying they see it on TikTok. I'm saying like, you know, yeah. we film on our phones. That's true. In a much clearer form. Like I just, I, yeah. I think it's their they're brain is going YouTube. to, their brain is going to know that as normal. Yeah. You know, so. I, yeah. I also was really impressed if you think about it, um, the makeup on the actors and actresses. Like mm-hmm. it just looks like it's, it's either they're not wearing makeup or they're doing the makeup part of the whole production of the movie is getting so good at making – if you're going to wear makeup that it just looks like your face. Right. Because we're literally seeing every pore on someone's face. For sure. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. I mean, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, they they make it – she's – Never been so like normal. She's re- like she's looking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really appreciate that because that you know it wasn't like a super done up situation. Because I think like if in in ones that are not quite this clear, there's a lot of places for the movie to hide, and that's one thing that's a little distracting, but also neat. Like the places we go, yeah. uh, there's this courtyard that, that Will Smith goes into. Was it Budapest? I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was. Um, and there's, you know, I don't know hey, if you no, it's Colombia. Colombia, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a Gulf Stream, you can get <laughs> and, five countries and in continents a day. In a well, day. and he can find somebody who <laughs> yeah. will give him that Gulf in that Stream same in that yeah. same day. And the explanation yeah. is, yeah, when they said something oh, I, oh, I know, know somebody. I think I know a guy. Yeah, yeah. when they That's said something need. about that being the same day, I was like, wait. What the fuck did they just say? <laughs> yeah. 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 And thank God they decided to sleep because that was yeah. definitely a sin in my mind. You know, I'm like, mm. oh, come on. You can't do this and not sleep. 
But anyhow, some of the places that they go, it's just, you know, you've got like loose rocks over in the corner and your eye is so clearly going to the background that in a regular movie, that stuff is just background stuff. You don't even see it. You're Mm -hmm. focusing on who the camera wants you to focus on. But here, your eye can focus on anything it wants to. And that, and I think they do a pretty good job of this working in the favor of the movie. Again, it's just the plot doesn't really, I thought the Columbia stuff was beautiful. The way the colors popped. Yeah. Like there were some kids playing in a fountain in the background. Yeah. Just like, yeah, I was like yeah, in there. As I was telling Aaron, the the I liked how it was during action scenes with the mm-hmm. the high frame rate. Yeah. I did not like it when it was just people regularly just talking because that's where it just felt too fakey, too video, home video, yeah, too whatever to me. Uh, there's not really any way you can split it up though. So I mean, no, it has really. to be it has yeah. to be that way. And you know, you talking about it being the future and everything. Maybe they'll refine some things over the next. Well, few and years. they have since the Hobbit. Yeah. This looks oh yeah a million times better than the Hobbit did in HFR. Well, but don't you think that's because the Hobbit? They're like wearing prosthetics. They're uh, that wearing, could be part of it, but know, I also fantasy. think it's the process of the way they process it, the way they shoot it. They're understanding more about the cameras. By the time James Cameron puts out Avatar, I bet it looks even better. Yeah, because yeah. that's the one thing that we always forget because we're we're so like in this like mm-hmm. instant now, you know, whatever. Um, uh, world we live in is that when we see something we're like ah oh, that doesn't work and then so then uh the 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 advances that happen later don't happen as quickly as they could right. because everybody's like ah oh, that sucks and so there's no yeah. money going towards it and there's no yeah. you know and it goes for almost anything and know? at some point there's always a balance right because at some point you become the person complaining about oh there's no film grain anymore mm-hmm. you know oh i'm not seeing the little the little hairs on the you know the film and that's what film I, really is and you know yeah, yeah and i i mean i'm not i'm not all the way there but i will just go back and say i just can concern there's got to be a way to do this but like i said like directors that have very unique looks and unique styles like Shyamalan, chazelle I mean, can they still have their style filmed like this? Yeah, it's. I mean, you think they can't? See, I don't. As I'm saying, I don't know that they can't because this looked. Very, no, I mean, yeah, I hear yeah, what you're saying. This looked very like, and this probably didn't help the movie either. That the movie was bland, but it looked bland. And, and Ang mm. Lee is a, a visual guy. I mean, like he has some. Even if the movie's not good, it's usually visually appealing, and mm. this one really wasn't. You know, outside of the action sequences. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating to pay attention to, yeah. especially in 3D. Uh, you know, we're so used to deep focus, those kind yeah, of things yeah. where you've just got, you know, whatever's in the foreground and focus right. and the background is blurry. Yeah. Um, Which still bugs me. Why can't they do that? Because, <laughs> like I said last night, Orson Welles figured this out in Citizen Kane in 1941 or whatever. Yeah. Like, they can't figure out a way to keep both of them in well, focus? Well, yes, they split diopter is the thing oh, you'll hear okay. a lot of people gotcha. talk about yeah. where you use a, a couple different lenses. But, um, but yeah, anyways, yeah, I think a talented director is going to work. Yeah. Within whatever technology. Maybe it'll be like 3D where like some of the better examples of 3D is when you had directors like Scorsese with Hugo Hugo, or Cameron or Mm -hmm. like those are the ones that were like this is a good use of 3D because these are people. Yeah, they use it as a tool instead of a gimmick. Yeah. Yeah. You need somebody who has a really good eye and knows how things, you know, when things look fake and when things look real and when things, you know, the little details that make things look. But like, do you think like, would you want to go see a Brett Ratner film? I mean, I, that's just no. I don't know general, why that popped in my head. But I'm the just saying, like, no. whoever you say, no, whoever the kidding. equivalent of Brett Ratner is right now, you want to go see that? Like, you want to see Michael? Well, maybe, maybe Michael Bay could do I, something I will with t- that. I will tell you. I will tell you this. And again, I am. I am the outlier in this. I know it. I, yeah, yeah. That, that's fine. I yeah. I want to see every movie this way. I, I, like I, every scene of every movie, just because I don't. I no, I know, and I, like I said, I know I'm way the outlier on this. But for me, the wow factor is is just yeah. like I'm just. I love I think, seeing technology advance. I think some I movies disagree. it would work super well, and I think that this is an example of it working well in a lot of ways. But the plot was not up to par with the visual. Well, that's and if there thing. was because you you know you're talking Jonathan about like here's how 3D works well, and when it's used as a tool. Yeah. Well, if someone can like a director can figure out how this high frame rate is a tool and understand the psychology of we the yeah. people who are consuming the media need it to kind of have a lo- something i don't know that we can kind of sink our teeth into more than it looking like a couple friends that decided to go make a home video which is i totally agree with you that's it has that kind of feel to it because it's so real it looks mm-hmm. yeah. it looks fake it's so real it looks yeah. fake so 
I think that there are some movies I'm totally fine, especially if the director gets that this is a tool, it's a way to tell a story, yeah. and then they can figure out how to use it as part of the storytelling. But I don't know that I want to see something like I'm, I'm looking at IMDb and Zom- Zombie Land is up here. Yeah, so, how to lose a guy in ten days? Yeah, like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I don't, down, man. Bring it on. I don't know. Revenge of the Nerds Two: Nerds back, in Paradise. For me, I just go back to all, like all the close-ups, yeah. and I just I was in awe every time there was an. No, like, I a agree with that. I was but, just like, but like, like one that needs prosthetics, one that needs like if Zombie Land is going to be like hitting a whole bunch of CGI characters yeah. with bats or something, right? Unless they have an insane budget for every zombie being perfect. It would look like trash. Well, but doesn't all technology go through this? Didn't sound go through Absolutely. this when sound was introduced? You know, like we can only do certain yeah. things and we have to figure out how to make, I think you know, ta- colorization. It'll, it'll yeah. When colors start, like every technology yeah. goes through this. But... They were putting like the microphones and the plants that yeah. were on the table yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think, it, I think yeah. it's definitely something that has to be developed. I, right now, I'm, I'm not liking what I see. Right. But... Can we can we what before we get done with this though? I want to talk about the product placement of this movie. Oh yeah, Coca-Cola. The HFR product placement. Budweiser. The Coca-Cola thing that was what I want to talk about because I found this so odd. Okay, so there's this older guy character who I guess ends up kind He's of He's the handler. He betrays him and um but anyway, yeah. there's you this get older, the sense that he really didn't have a say in it. Yeah, there's yeah. this older guy character, maybe kind of a father figure to Will Smith's character. I don't know, whatever. He's only in like a couple of scenes. The movie's but, not interested in but, letting us But know. they randomly throw in that he's a recovering alcoholic, I guess. But yeah. like it has nothing to do with anything. And in both scenes where like he's about to take a drink, a Coke can or Coke bottle like comes into the screen from yeah. Will Smith, like, no, you should have this. So like I'm sitting there thinking, like, was Coke like we will totally do your movie? But what we want to do is a very specific thing where we say, if you're a recovering alcoholic, Coke is there Our for shit you. is healthier. Yes. <laughs> That's the only thing I could think of. that Because the recovering alcoholic thing didn't even make sense. Like, I, I mean, I don't know why it was in there. Mm-hmm. It served no purpose except to have a Coke product placement. Yeah. And I just thought that was such a weird angle to take. It's uh, it, This isn't product placement, but you bringing this guy's <laughs> alcoholism for no reason, you know, yeah. in this movie – Reminds me, was it Law and Order that had a season finale where this woman's sexuality was not a part of any part of the season, and then huh. by the end of the the this one season, because I guess there was contract disputes or whatever, uh, she gets fired, and then she goes, "Is law this order. is this because I'm a lesbian?" It was law <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, and then yeah, and he's like, "No," and this came out of nowhere, yeah. like yeah. there was never yeah. any mention no. of what she was. My wife is a huge law and order fan. We were watching that episode live, and it was yeah, that was the most insane yeah. thing ever. I can't remember that actress's name. I can I can picture her clear as day. Yeah, but, just yeah. like, is this because I'm a lesbian? She was like, like, of course the, not. She was like the DA, care, yeah. like the DA's lawyer, that the one they always went to for the cases. And stuff mm-hmm. but yeah you know i just thought about something as we wrap up i feel like one of the reasons i didn't ever sink into it i'm just not realizing it is because from the main character every single character you don't know if you can trust them there's not one character on the screen that you're really clear yeah, of who they are that one percent really sucks doesn't it today? oh my god <laughs> yeah, that's for sure that's but for even sure. even the lead himself you know like at the end he calls that handler and the handler's like yeah everything is good like you were saying earlier everything's fine you know we went and checked blah 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 like we can't trust yeah. him we can't trust his word mm. and why would we ever believe that a higher government agency wouldn't be coming in to wrap up those guys that just survived like that was Gemini the top of the government? No, it was like a secret lab. So somebody else was probably invested too. So then it's just this really simple, quick wrap up. Wrap, wrap up. That's like we're just gonna slap a bow on this, call it done. It's already been two hours. Thanks for thanks for being here, guys. But like the girl, we don't ever really yeah. know hundred percent if she in, is she out? Yeah, because she was a double agent for a while. Oh, like yeah. she was spying on him. Um, and then like the kid, yeah. he's been trained to be a murderer by the person that hates them. But then he's okay. But mm-hmm. is he really? Because it doesn't make any sense. Why would he suddenly be completely okay? I mean, his dad just beat the crap out of him up on on you know. So I yeah. you know. So anyways, but every single person has this sort of like wishy-washy and there's no one that i'm really rooting for except for maybe the pilot and he dies a fiery death i don't know i tell you i am glad that this is not doing that well because uh because you know future gemini man movies would uh 
would they would make that Gemini uh, lab like Umbrella in the Resident Evil movies? Yeah. It would be exactly or like Treadstone, Treadstone, or, yeah. anything. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be just like that. Where it's like, oh, you thought you were you thought you got into the yeah. the real uh, plot of this, but that was just scratching the surface, you know. And there's, coming 2022. And then, even if you liked the first one, by the time they get through all that, you're like, I don't want to have anything to do with the series, yeah, ever again. Um, I did like also that you brought up the the line about the one percent because there were a couple moments where like Will Smith like kind of was Will Smith and you were yeah. like the part where he's like you are clearly not the best at this yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like why couldn't you have been like this the whole movie yeah. Yeah. you did have those moments <laughs> yeah, there, there were yeah. mo- there were moments where because he's Will Smith you can't help it right he's gonna pop up every yeah. now and then mm-hmm. but um yeah no I I think though I don't know how you guys wrap up so I apologize but I think I would recommend someone go watch this. I really do. Even, if you can see it the way it's intended, I think it's enough of a unique experience. I don't think it's that, it's that worth bad. Watching. By the way, shout out to that Stones River Theater, man. They really yeah. did have a good projection. They, on this. I rarely, I rarely see a bad. I will say, uh, I had to watch Godzilla: King of the Monsters in 3D, and I don't think this was their fault because that movie is dark as. Fun. Yeah, that's been the only bad experience I've had there watching a movie. But, um, um, I would imagine. Now, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I've, I never ran a, a high frame rate movie when I was a projectionist, but uh, I would imagine that the wattage of that lamp that's in there is super high because it's got to go through not only the the 3D polarizers, mm-hmm. but then you have your glasses, and it still looked bright. Yeah, I thought well, so too. it 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 literally is twice as bright just because there's twice as many frames. And, that's that's how I understand it okay. at least. And I don't know that I completely process what that means. And they were in the catacombs too. Yeah, but what I, what I've heard is the reason 3D looks so much better in high frame rate is because of the brightness mm. is literally twice as yeah, much. It's got to be. You're seeing. I, Six, you're seeing sixty moments of that brightness as opposed to thirty moments. A uh, a theater like that that we were in uh, would have probably had a two thousand or three thousand watt lamp when I was working at Hollywood Twenty Seven. That one was definitely like it had to have been like six thousand somewhere yeah. around there. And that's that's a fairly that's probably the most recent AMC in this area, mm-hmm. like Middle Tennessee area, because I can't think of one that would have popped. Unless there's like maybe like somewhere like Gallatin or something. But I do get the up. sense that if, I mean, it's got to be, the, I mean, and it's got to be because they have some of the, one of the later projectors because that, I mean, that's why it's not anywhere in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Because if it was in Nashville, you would have gone to one of these theaters and it would have been completely dark. It was, there's no way they would have been able to run it. No way. I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. even imagine. Like there's, there's some theaters that are running 2D that look dark. Yeah. And so the fact that this looked so bright is uh, Yeah, I like uh, solo. Like I, I I like I felt bad for people that went and saw that in 3D cuz mm-hmm. I, I could I couldn't figure out what the hell was going yeah. on in 2D. In I that could movie. tell immediately the 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 logos ironically mm-hmm. uh served a purpose <laughs> uh in that the last two logos from the Chinese companies were in high frame rate but the first logos Oh, that's funny. W- like, you know, weren't rendered yeah, that way. Right. They did you could shine. Immedi- you yeah. could immediately tell when the logos started coming in. I was like, "Oh, there's the high frame rate." Yeah. I didn't notice that oh, i did have one other thing that i yep. wanted to say is that cool mm-hmm. okay so there's this thing that happens in movies and that is like when a woman fights there's always this moment when the guy shows up to save her mm-hmm. and i've been trained to expect that in every movie that i watch mm-hmm. where there's a woman that's like fighting for her life and there's been two movies where a guy hasn't shown up and it surprised me the first one was wonder woman when yeah. she's fighting in that tower i i didn't realize how much i was expecting her to be saved by a guy and when he never showed up i didn't know if i was let down or excited and i had to think about yeah. that for a while and i was like oh my god i'm excited because she totally stood her own and in this movie it happens again there's this yeah. really cool fight scene yeah. where she's in this close quarters and she's fighting this guy and not only does she kick his ass but then like she turns super dark and torturous yeah you, you, know, you know where else <laughs> that true. also it's rare that a guy saves a woman and it's this has been going on since like early 80s is horror movies oddly oh. enough no they just get killed no 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 i'm saying oh, the oh, women oh. that survive <laughs> final girl yeah the final girl the whole like with this oh, okay. with the slasher film boom in the 80s that kind of became a thing where oh, cool. it was always a woman that survived and killed the bad guy and uh she was usually by herself so that, yeah didn't have... that's interesting what's interesting yeah. is is movies have gotten like quote unquote smarter about it and they'll have the guy still save the day but then the girl will say something like oh I had it you didn't have to yeah, like, yeah, like that yeah. was the next yeah. evolution and yeah. now they're actually having the guts to well and there's a there's a moment when there's three pops pop 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 
Uh-huh. And she says, how many guys did you bring? Because I just heard three. And I and I just assumed that that was going to be pop, pop, pop from like a long distance and the, here come the bullets yeah. from far away or something. Mm. So it's just interesting how we're trained sometimes in, in stories and narrative and visuals that we're kind of trained, oh, this is what's going to happen next. And in this case, in storytelling, I, I like to be surprised that there's a good fight scene. So from a female perspective. That's awesome. Okay, well, we didn't like this movie, unfortunately. I wanted to yeah, very much sure. so. I thought I thought... I saw the trailer six months ago. I thought it, uh, it might be, might be good, might be fun, and yeah, disappointed. All I have of us. seen this trailer so many times too. They, I'm pretty sure, like whenever they started showing this, like middle of the summer, maybe mm-hmm. every single movie oh, I've yeah. seen has had this trailer in front of it. I, I, I it, that's that hasn't happened. That doesn't happen all the time. That's a weird thing. So I don't know what it is that they were able to get through to where every movie had this yeah, trailer. No idea. I mean, somebody Ooh. made deal with somebody. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that'll do it for this one. Uh, go to Sincast presented by Cinema Sins on Facebook. Uh, we also have uh, Cinema Sins Twitter, Music Video Sins Twitter. Uh, Jonathan, you have a Twitter. Uh, we have a TV Sins Twitter, and I'm also at Sam Loomis13. In fact, uh, a lot of people in this room have social media. If you want to talk about this episode, Aaron? At Aaron Dicer. At Aaron Dicer. Danae? Uh, at Danae says. At Danae says, and uh, and then we also have a Discord. I've been yep. seeing a bunch of people come on Facebook and ask for a link, and I have been giving those links dutifully. And it's always, we want to talk to Danae. And they want to talk <laughs> to Danae. That's all they want to do. I, I'm the Sinmissons Unicorn. Cause there should be know. a category that is just Danae. Ooh, a place for me to pose crazy stuff. Yes, what? that's pretty much already the behind the scenes. <laughs> that's behind the yeah. scenes, yeah. yeah, behind the scenes ca- uh, channel or category, uh, she's on there a lot, uh, along with a, a merry band of fellows. Um, anyway, uh, that'll do it for this week. It's Chris Atkins and Jonathan Watkins, Aaron Dicer, and Danae Hughes. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube. Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasends.com.